What do you think is like the ideal role of women in society? Women should be allowed to be more masculine, feel free to be aggressive. Women wanting to be like men. There is a lot of anger. Norms are sort of broken. You can do whatever the hell you want. In today's day and age, gender norms have been equalized. Today I'm out here and the question that I'll be asking is, what do you think it means to be feminine today? And if we're talking about 2023, it means to have female body parts. It's women empowerment. We are boss ladies. Expressing yourself with no judgment. Femininity is chaos, femininity is emotion, and at the same time, it's power. Do you feel like you have to be a woman to be feminine, or do you feel like you have to be a man to be masculine? I believe we all have feminine energy. Honestly, I don't really think there is much of a difference between femininity and masculinity. I work construction, and I'll go on the weekend, bust down and twerk. And <laughs> do whatever, man. We often hear about toxic masculinity. So in that instance, do you think toxic femininity exists? The f all men, like, mentality, I think a lot of women today have. I don't think it does because with patriarchy and just general society, it's often oriented towards male imaging. What do you think is, like, the ideal role of women in society? Whatever f you want to be. My girlfriend is a lot more feminine. My sister is a badass, wants to do construction. What do you think is like the ideal role for men in society? I think to an extent, like there should be some traditionality to it. There's so many guys that I know that have no interest in working, that love kids and just want to stay at home. And what I notice, the straight men that I date, they tend to take on this super hyper-masculine role that kind of a cover-up for their ego. It's like today, there's a lot of confusion on what femininity is and even what a woman is. And if we can't have conversations that bring understanding, it can only hurt society. But in today's lack of nuance and as a guy, am I even allowed to explore the topic of femininity without being considered sexist or being called gay? And can we find a balanced approach to gender dynamics or is it too far gone? I guess we gonna see starting with a dating expert with a unique perspective. My name is Blaine Anderson. I'm the founder and CEO of Dating by Blaine, and I teach men how to build confidence, authentically market themselves, and date women they're excited about. What do you say to people who say you don't ask fish how to catch fish? Who better to ask about what women are looking for than a woman? I think it's crazy to think that a woman wouldn't be able to speak to what women are looking for in dating. What do you think are the biggest struggles that men face in dating and how does that differ from women? Desirable woman is going to have a lot of options. So how is any one guy going to stand out? Where for women, the challenge is different. In essence, is how is she going to tell if a guy is the right fit for her and relationship ready? There's distinct challenges between men and women. I assume that we hold different values as well. What do you think men generally value in women. Men value women who don't play it cool and are willing to insert themselves and put themselves out there a little bit, which actually might not fall into the historically feminine category that you would think of. I'd have to imagine like women are probably asking for help on how to date men. What do you usually tell them and what do they usually come in with? Women, I want them to realize that who they're attracted to may not be the person who is going to make a good partner. I work with a lot of really great guys are continually hearing, oh, you're such a nice guy, but I didn't feel a spark. Women need to give a chance for that to build because it can build and the person who you have the spark with might not be a good long-term partner. It seems like both genders can benefit from taking on different roles. And so we'll come back to blame, but I was more so curious on the dating lives of the streets. How old are you and what has your dating experience been like recently? I'm 26 and dating apps are just like, I'm like ready for the next step, but like, oh my God, left, 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 left. <laughs> I'm 18. I'm very, very busy with school, so I don't really have time to date. A lot of times it's expected of the guy to do a lot of the work in the relationship and like ask women, like ask him out or whatever. I feel like a lot of people are struggling to have like genuine connections with people. What do you think men value in women? Big tits. No. <laughs> <laughs> they really value how women can be so in touch with their emotions and their feelings. Someone who's nurturing and a good listener. Um, I think men are a little less good at describing their emotions. That makes sense because I feel like sometimes I make myself so busy so I don't have to feel emotions. Sometimes just like being around my girlfriend, it like allows me to relax more if that makes sense. What do you think women value in men? In a nice like six foot two. Six figures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six figure salary. Yeah. I think women value men that know what they want. Be able to be vulnerable too. 
Uh, not to say like be crying on their shoulder every day, but showing them glimpses that you can be vulnerable and that you can be trustworthy. And ultimately, I think most women just want safety. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a huge range of what the both feminine and masculine value. But I think what both can agree on is that they both like personalized gifts. What do you think? Oh, yes, of course. I love a good gift. When's the last time you gave like a customized present to someone you care about? Fifth grade. It's been a while, I think. I mean, it's it's very hard to like build out like a customized gift. Well, you're in luck because Kittle Print makes it easy to print on demand from this designing your favorite hoodies, t-shirts, and more to holding your finished product right at your doorstep. Do you wanna go try it out? Right now? Can we do it at your house though, is that okay? Follow me. Oh. So not only can you create personalized gifts for family and friends using design templates, mockups, and even generative AI, you can also use it to print products for your e-commerce or physical store, or make branded merch for your business like I'm doing here. And for my international audience, Kittle can ship almost anywhere in the world like here in Mexico. And so thanks to our sponsor and try Kittle Print now and use promo code GEN or my link in the description for a free 30-day Kittle Pro plan. And now back to the video. Because just like a personalized gift, every relationship has a unique dynamic. But what's common amongst most today is a lack of trust between the masculine and the feminine. So I was curious on how valid that concern was. Have you ever cheated? I've been cheated on, but I've never cheated. <laughs> no, but I've been cheated on. So before I came out as gay, I was dating a boy and I made out with a girl at school and he found out and told the whole school. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think men or women cheat more? Men cheat. But I think the stereotype is men cheat more. <laughs> and although it's probably very hard to prove this because who the hell is going to admit to cheating? That's like breaking the number one rule of becoming a good cheater. But it seems like at least based on this statistic, men do cheat more than women. But even if men are better cheaters, when it comes to making money on OF, women are clear. Many women have been incredibly successful on the platform like Corinna Koff. 48 hours. <laughs> oh my uh, fuck. I made a little over a million dollars. And even though most are making only $150 a month, some broke university students are making upwards of tens of thousands a month. But besides all that, it raises the question, is this female empowerment or is it ruining their lives? One side argues that it gives women an ability to share content and challenge taboos around body positivity. If there are women who have been told that their sexuality is something that they should be ashamed of absolutely oh, trust me, they're gonna... well the other side argues that it takes away their true femininity and contributes to the social perception of women as sexual objects feminist legal scholar Catherine mckinnon argued that of is a pimp and that is an instrument of patriarchal oppression but with everything these days either over exaggerated or under reported i had to assume that most women weren't even considering this path so i wanted to test that theory what do you guys think about OnlyFans? Have you guys ever thought about making an OnlyFans yourself? Yes. <laughs> so many times. Yes, a hundred percent. Why have you thought so and why haven't you? I'm an EMT, so I've been broke forever. I don't know, easy money, man. Like we all for free, why not for some money? Oh, I don't know, because I feel like it's gotten relatively common and I think there are ways to do it that could be safe, but I'm also 30 and I know what the ramifications are. I think I get nervous when younger people make OnlyFans just because maybe they don't realize that that's gonna be on the internet forever. So I gotta say, it, it was more than I thought, but when you consider the impact of money on individuals and the decisions that we make, is it a surprise? And so I wanted to keep exploring to see how economic and social pressures are influencing what femininity means today. How do you think modern feminism has impacted gender roles today. I'm a feminist, like I'm all for women's rights. There is a large part of the feminist movement which takes it too far. Do you feel like you identify as a feminist then? I feel like feminism is very rooted in women wanting to be like men. There is a lot of an underlying tone of like rage and like anger. And what I don't like about it also is like the separation it creates between feminine and masculine. I think the like norms are sort of broken and like, you're gonna be a great mom one day. Yeah. It's like, no, you can do whatever the hell you want. Maybe gender roles are a lot more interchangeable now. How do you think that's impacting dating? I work with a lot of women, you know, in, the, in their dating lives. One of the things that comes up the most is how do I lean into my feminine at the same time protect myself, hold strong boundaries without being too ma masculine. Yeah, it seems like it. it seems like the underlying world word is like confusion, which yeah. is leading to either not knowing know how to act maybe. And with that confusion, I was curious on how a multi-million dollar dating expert was approaching balance. I'm married. Obviously, I work. I have a business, so it's not like I'm a stay-at-home homemaker, but just naturally, like what I take on around the house and what I like to do is the more traditional feminine roles 
I am more nurturing, where my husband maybe has some of the more masculine associated roles. So it seems like anything, balance is key, and that it looks different based on each individual's choices. But in a society with a lack of nuance, is achieving balance an easy thing to do today? Because again, what does femininity look like in the economic climate of today? Because even though there's still work to be done, women have made significant progress in the workplace worldwide. Thanks to a pivotal 2018 legislation, Iceland is leading the way. Companies employing 25 or more workers are required to show proof of equal pay and non-compliance leads to a $500 a day fine. But despite this policy, there's criticism. People ask the purpose of such an action. It is to demonstrate how important the work contribution of women is to society. It's about gender equality. We have been fighting for it for decades. Women don't work. Nothing works. And on October 24, 2023, 100,000 people, including the Prime Minister, Katrin Jakobsdottir, went on a 24-hour strike of women not working. It disrupted much of society, everything from schools to banks to public offices. Shops, banks and schools across the Nordic nation were shut or open for shorter hours as female staff stayed home. And with many sectors shutting down, it showed just how crucial women are in the economy, especially in female-dominated industries. And with a surge of global global communities like Natalie Ellis's Boss Babes, there's also been an increase in acceptance worldwide toward female entrepreneurs. But of course, there's also been some backlash. And you may sit here and think that your career matters, but the truth is that when you're 52 and you're past it in a house by yourself, do you think the fact that you can afford a few extra Gucci bags is going to genuinely make you feel happy? So it's clear that women are becoming just as involved as men in the worldwide economy. But with more time at work, whether it be through desire or necessity, how is it impacting the future of families? Do you guys want kids? I think so. I want some baby. I want a big old family. What would you like when you have a family? A man who could pay my bills. <laughs> Do you want kids? Yes. Do you think like people around your age share in that desire? Uh, I know a lot of my friends are delaying the choice, but they're still in wanting to have a family eventually. Half of my girlfriends back there want kids, but the other half vehemently don't want children. Now, if a woman doesn't want kids, she's not uh, wrong for making that decision. She's empowered for it. Do you think that's maybe leading down a path of maybe devaluing the family unit? I think having kids is really expensive to raise a child in modern day America. I and mean, we're gonna have a major issue caring for older adults when we have fewer kids being born, but if women don't want to have kids, that's their decision. Because even with more women working, it's to a point where dual incomes aren't becoming enough. And so even if the desire for family is there, in many ways, the economic climate is preventing it. But when many millennial women say they prefer a pet over a kid, is it actually more so the social pressure that's influencing the decision? Because seriously, what explains the stark differences between generations? Your guys' parents together or divorced? Mine are together. Yeah, both together. What were your guys' like parents' gender roles like? Was like the, the homemaker. My dad was in the military, so he was deployed a lot of the time. It was kind of forced a little bit. So there wasn't like as much choice as there might be today. Yeah. What would you like when you have a family? A man who could pay my bills. <laughs> So you want kind of the similar thing? I will stay at home. If he's out there making money, bringing home the bread, the bacon, I'll do whatever he needs. <laughs> and so is change always a good thing? Because when the pursuit of equality brings about choices that lead to confusion, how can we achieve that balance? It seems like you struck that balance well, just based on how you described it. You run a business, I guess in your own relationship, maybe you like to show up in a different way. It seems like you're kind of a example of that based on what you've described. I don't think there's obviously a right or a wrong way. Like there might be men who want to show up in a more feminine way at home, but still want to be the breadwinner and work really hard or vice versa. Do you think traditional values then are positive or a negative to society? you know, sort of having a blueprint can be great, but if people are forced into that role, then it's obviously going to have a negative effect in their mental health. People have the best idea of who they are and who they're meant to be, and allowing them to follow that, whether it's within dating or career, is the best bet for society. Because when we promote those embracing the norms and also embracing those valuing tradition, we redefine the idea of equality as something that's only achieved by bringing others down. 
Because if the movement's goal all along was having more choice, why can't we appreciate both progress and also what worked in the past? Do you think true equality between men and women is even achievable or desirable? Quality within the law? I think you want that. I think it's also very healthy to recognize that there's differences. Balance starts with us agreeing to actually listen to each other and actually have conversations like we're having. And people also have to be open to changing their minds. Because while true equality may be difficult to achieve and not everyone may desire it, nothing significant ever came through indifference. And so even if you're a guy that's questioning female issues or a woman questioning ours, it's exactly why it's now more important than ever that we dare to have conversations. And that, that's exactly the mission of exploring the unfamiliar. So thanks to Kid Owen, subscribe not only to this channel, but to my second channel where I post highlights from my live streams. And also join the Discord where you can have a space to debate with like-minded individuals from both sides from all over the world. If YouTube gets it right, then I guarantee 100% that you'll like this video too.